figure out what it is. Uh, you, you use this time to conclude July, August, and September, the Polio Plus. There was no charge for Rotary and National uh, Ball Bears Club because we will the first two quarters already. Thank you. And the other, yes. That's a cost we, we set aside to cover the cost of the social. Now, you know, when we start putting drinks on top of that, you'll pay for it. We're trying to, uh, that's still in flux. We're trying to make it so that only the people, if, if you pay for social as a club and you don't come, you're sort of being double billed. It's unfair that you don't come and other people get to use your money. And we're still looking at that, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, in an attempt to have everybody come to the Christmas party, you, we have actually billed folks. There's a line item for the Christmas party. There's a line item for the Valentine's party. Okay. Uh, what we're trying to do is, and the line item for socials. What we're trying to do is lower all those numbers. So that if we have a social and we meet somewhere, if you show up, you pay for uh, your drinks and maybe we pay for hors d'oeuvres. Okay, so it's basically going to really come back on the people that attend. Uh, with the Christmas party, uh, that's a bigger event, costs more. Uh, we're still looking at that, but the line, every one of those line items that you see have been reduced for the coming year. And uh, any input that anybody has on how to do this would be helpful. But what we want to have happen is if you if you you come to a quarterly social and you you know you buy drinks, you pay for your drinks. Uh, uh, we had a very nice uh, social at the Holiday Inn, and uh, the orders were gratis of the hotel. Uh, but sometimes we may have to pay for our or absorb whatever else. So we're still working on that, but the intent, the, the intent of all these changes is to really be transparent and have actual understanding of costs and expenses. And I think we're, we're moving in the right direction, but there's still room for improvement. Okay, any other, any other, yes? Well, well, more or less, we our our our, our uh, bylaws require us to separate the money into two accounts. We haven't done that yet, but we're working to that. We're also in violation of our bylaws because it says we have to change them to bring in the uh, criteria for the family member, the corporate member, and the e member. The the the, the Text for all that has already been sent out to the board members. Board members, I've asked them to look at it. There's been some discussion. We'll have a board meeting in August, the third Friday in August, where we'll probably have some changes to our bylaws. And tonight we're going to try and initiate a change. They actually have two physical accounts: one for administrative expenses and dollars, and one for our charitable work. Right now we don't, but we're getting closer. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I know it goes to the 501-3C or the category, and they don't call it retained earnings, but what is our balance normally that we have in our back pocket or retained earnings? Uh, this is as July 1st. Uh, retained earnings are 20000 Four hundred seventy-nine dollars. <throat> Net income minus two thousand three hundred sixty-nine dollars. Equity account there. The difference there is for eighteen thousand to the good. Okay, and I have the last seven years if you like to look at it. He's put a lot of time in on this. And 
your eyes get crossed after a while. Any other questions about about the money or where we're headed or things like that? Great. Okay. Yeah, what? Right. What's that? Yes. Sir. I don't know. You, how many, what percentage of past dues money do we have outstanding? As of June 30th, we have $3,900 outstanding dues. <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> Great. Uh, the final thing I'd like to do, and I've been very remiss on this, and we're just going to make it pretty close. Um, Bob has been our president for a year. He's done a lot. You probably don't know it, but he was a president in uh, Henderson, North Carolina before, and he was also a district governor there. No. No? Everything but. Everything but. Okay. <laughs> See, I got that wrong too. But anyway, he, he's done a lot of work in Henderson. He taught me a whole heck of a lot, and uh, you know, I never really got to know the guy, and we never really had a chance to say thank you. So I was talking to a number of people about this, and you know, nobody really knew him as well as the people in Henderson. So I, what I did was I got online, and I looked at the Henderson Rotary Club, and they don't have a website. They have a Facebook page. I went through it. I found some pictures of people that had both their names, and I went to the electronic telephone directory in Henderson and actually found some phone numbers. So I called the people in Henderson, and uh, I recorded their phone calls, and I'd like to share them with you and like, tell you about Bob. So we're working hard on this, but uh, this is one of our webmasters, Chris Jones. The website is up to date, and while we're waiting for him to start the one phone call, uh, there's no meeting next week. It's on the website correctly, but there's no meeting next week. Play. Can you hear that? Hello, Richard Dukes. Hi, Mr. Dukes. This is Jeff Johnson from the Rotary Club of Beaver. I am, well, uh, how are you? The film is Philip Bofer. Why are you calling me? Sorry, Mr. Dukes. So let me play that for you. Well, then I'll be 
person. I'm trying to get some insight into some of the old club members. Yes, I am the right person. Because my husband gave his all for the club, and it was quite painful for a lot of us. You see, he was most keen on being the president, and he worked long and hard, first as the president as you knew, then the president elect, and finally he became president, and I must say it was a proud day. And then it fell apart. Oh, I'm very sorry for your loss, Mrs. Stokes, but I'm really not that interested. It was a proud day. He was so excited, and he had already worked so hard, and then it all fell apart. It seems that every place he went, nothing had been done, even though it looked all right. But the more he looked, the worse it became, and he became the worse, then depressed. And finally, in his sixth month, he committed himself for despondency. When two months later, he passed, and with him, the dark times ended. Well, Mrs. Stokes, that's a very sad story. I am so sorry, but I know you need to go to church. And I just need to ask you about one person you might know. His name is Alan. Oh, you mean Alan Warren? Yes, I think he was. He really helped me out during those dark days, and without him, I'm sure the club would have disappeared. No, no, no. I don't mean Alan Warren. I mean a guy with the last name of Alan, Bob Allen. Do you know him? Mr. Jones. It's Johnson. Oh, okay. Jeff, Jeff Johnson. Mr. Johnson. I'm a Christian woman and cannot and will not spread gossip or act maliciously. So don't expect me to make any comments. But I will say that Bob Allen is a name our club will not forget. And what he did left a profound effect on each and every member. Wow, that's great, Mrs. Stokes. <laughs> Thanks so much for your insights and have a very pleasant time at church. God bless you. No, Mr. Johnson. God bless you. You will need it. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I was astounded and delighted. I was, you know, this woman said Bob is a go-getter. He makes things happen. I was really, really excited. Later that day, I called the other guy, Bob Marks, and uh, I think we can play that for you now. You ready? So let's see, the slide should be coming up here in a minute. I really haven't had a chance to look at him too much. Um, give me a minute. Hello. Technology. Hello. 